Come one, come all, it's the Tito Bonito Show. Starring tonight, very special guests, Ruby Champagne, the Mexican Spitfire of Burlesque, and burlesque icon, Miss Indigo Blue. And now, here's your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque himself, Tito Bonito! What's up, everybody? How y'all doing this beautiful Friday, July? July, about how good you're feeling right now, because I know you're feeling good watching the Tito Bonito Show. Welcome, welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. I am, of course, your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque, Tito Bonito, and I am not wearing anything from the waist down. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for the show. Hey, Faith, how y'all doing? We got uh, our guest in the house tonight. I do want to shout out some stuff really quick before we start the show. Uh, As you know, we are here every Friday, so make sure you check us out. Show some love since this is not an actual TV show where you can all respond to me in cheers. uh, In cheers. Uh, I want you all to, if you like what you see, if you're loving the moment that you're experiencing with us, I want you to hit the hearts right on the side. It's going to be on the right hand bottom corner. Also, if you have any questions for any of the performers, including myself, you can put those in the question mark box and we'll get to them eventually. Also, uh, tell your friends, go send them this Instagram live because you know you want to see me talk with some of the biggest burlesque stars in the world. Better now. Oh, I miss you too. Thank you so much for joining in. Not only that, but we got a plug with the number one burlesque performer in the world, Jeez Louise. Y'all, she and Lola Van Ella just aired episode two of Lolisbo, their joint um, venture, if you will. And it was so good. I literally clapped out loud. <laughs> I clapped a lot. It's so good. It's going to be on their YouTube. So make sure you go check out Lolisbo on YouTube because that shit was ace. And they had very special guests. Family, All Stars 5 winner. Shout out Shay motherfucking kool Also, I'm posting these uh, Tito Bonito shows on YouTube as well. So if you want to see them on a TV screen and Instagram ain't working, go check me out. Cuban Missile Series. I also just posted... Uh, season three, episode one through three of Cuban Missile Series. So it's tackling um, Pansy Craze Peep Show's final show, which was right before the pandemic started. Uh, second episode's about the first Boy Less show that I did at Fault Line that used to be owned by Judy Garland. And then the third episode's all about Tribe Tuesdays. That was an LGBTQ charity show that we used to do every month. So if you want to see what we were getting into before uh, this time happened, then you should go check out my YouTube channel. But I digress. I am very excited to bring on our performers today. And if you don't know about them, you are going to find out a lot. We're going to get to talk to them. We're going to play some fun games. And maybe Jeez Louise could stick around and help them out. Because today we're going to be playing Name That Stripper twice. But we're going to be doing two different versions. And let me tell you, I'm very excited about uh, the very special new version we have of that game. So... Uh, before anything, before I bring on our first guest, I do also want to shout out, make sure you follow me on OnlyFans, uh, $5 a month, softcore fantasies for your life. Go check that shit out, Tito Bonito. Um, but I digress, y'all. I'm very excited to bring on, the idea of this show is basically to bring a platform to my friends, to my favorite people that I admire, and give them a chance to promote themselves, talk about anything they want to talk about. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm very excited to bring first guest who is known to the world as the pocket princess pinup herself give it up for mexico's finest ruby champagne there you go look how cute that looks i love it i'm gonna keep this I'm going to keep this up throughout the show. I am going to turn off the comments just so everybody can watch your beautiful face. And if you like, uh, if you love this performer and you fall in love with her, which I guarantee you, if you haven't before, you're going to tonight, you uh, want to make sure to tip them. Who do you, whose shoulder is touching you? That's my mom. <laughs> Hi, Mama Champagne. Hi. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, bien, gracias. Aquí. <laughs> Ay, gracias por estar en el TV show con nosotros. Sí, muy divertido. Gracias. Me encanta. No, de, gracias por tener una hija tan preciosa y perfecta y me encanta Ruby tanto. Ah, gracias, gracias. Oh, se, se parecen como hermanas. Sí. 
Gracias. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, how are you guys? All right, I wanted you. to show her off because I'm at her house because we're going to watch a show in a bit. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I love that so much. Your mom is beautiful. She looks hella young, girl. But you know how I, know. I feel. I know how I feel about your age. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? You look, you look wonderful as always, girl. Well, thank you so much. I thought I would dress up for the occasion. No, I'm loving, I'm loving, you know, I love me a high ponytail and a strong bang. You know what I'm saying? I love all that you're serving today. You thank are you, a, you. you are a dynamite in the burlesque scene, young lady. Oh, thank you so much. You've, uh, I mean, it's not a thank you. It's just, I'm just stating I'm a little facts. spark. I'm a little I'm, spark. I'm stating facts. You are a multi-award <laughs> winning performer. You have uh, achieved amazing titles like Miss Viva Las Vegas 2010. You were um, Miss Tiki Oasis 2018. Yeah. And on top of that, you were also the queen of burlesque at the San Antonio Burlesque Festival in 2014. Is there anything that Ruby Shank Ping cannot do? Um, I can't tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> Valid, completely valid. <laughs> That's not something I could do either. Uh, yeah. What is, of all of your accomplishments, what's been the most rewarding memory you've had in your years of performing burlesque? Besides meeting me. Besides meeting you and being friends with you. Is that too loud? Can you hear that? No, you sound perfect. Okay, because okay. I'm outside because I thought it was like lovely out here. Uh, what is it? Mm, my gosh. Well, one of my biggest goals was to perform in Europe. So that's a personal gigantic accomplishment of mine was to be able to perform in Europe and in various countries, but particularly in Paris, because I love Paris so much. So when I got the opportunity to perform in Paris, that was definitely like a goal achieved. Oh, I can't imagine that. I'm so ready. That is also one of my goals. And when I got into that Vienna Boy Les Festival, that was like, I was like, uh, I could die. I could die. Um, uh, how do you think, because you've been performing burlesque, do you want to say the amount of years? 14. 14! That is amazing. I love it. I'm about to be in October on Halloween. I'm going to celebrate 10. Wow. So you, you, have a whole, you have a whole college education ahead of me. <laughs> and on top of that, you were in LA way before me. You were one of the first people I ever met in Los Angeles. What do you feel like has been the biggest change in the industry in Los Angeles in the past, like, 10 years? The biggest change is that, well, not since March, but the biggest change that I had seen through the years is the availability of shows. Because they used to be kind of far, far and few between that you would be able to find a burlesque show, aside from maybe, like, Velvet Hammer and then uh, Monday Night Tees would start, and that was weekly. But And there were maybe like a couple other ones here and there, but not so much. It was pretty sporadic. And then burlesque just grew tremendously. And then it basically, up until March, you could find a burlesque show every night of the week in Los Angeles, Orange County, probably San Diego. San Diego was definitely growing through the years as well. So that's definitely been a huge change is the the uh, variety of shows available because there's also like different caliber shows and styles of shows and types of entertainment that you might see at some shows a little bit there's sure. different variety and there's also some that are a little bit more themey and I think that's another thing that kind of has evolved through the years as well is the the more of like themed performances which is do you really like fun. do you like themed shows I love to see them, but I'm not a fan of being in them. <laughs> is there a reason why you don't? Like, I definitely can give my opinion on it as well. But is there a reason why you feel like theme shows, uh, you don't like them as much to perform in? Because uh, I feel like I'm locked in just for that show. You know, so if I have an act, unless it's an act that I feel like could carry in different shows, then I might be okay with it. But there's some that I feel like, well, I'm only locked in to do it if I'm in this themed show. And so I think that's where it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on costuming if I'm only going to use it for that one show. Or especially so if you don't, yeah, if you don't know the character that well, it's kind of hard to like give your all to like a show. Because I mean, I feel yeah. like when I, when I moved here, there was a lot. I, I don't know if it's just maybe I'm, I try to travel a little bit more, but I do feel like, yeah, the theme shows were like excessive, which is yes. not, 
which is not bad, but I do. I it started appreciate. getting to be a bit much. I, I appreciate, yeah, the variety. And I do think yeah. that something LA kind of lacked for a while, but kind of had like dips and valleys was yeah. including a variety in the sense of like having just not only burlesque in the show, but maybe including drag or sideshow or circus and stuff like yes. that. And I think yes. LA, LA kind of started doing that, which I yeah, really Yeah, that's, that's definitely been a change as well. Because before, it, yeah, it used to be just burlesque. And actually, uh, when I first started as well, there was a lot of uh, rockabilly and burlesque. So I would perform at a lot of rockabilly shows, like at Spikes or a place in LA that's gone. They're all gone. Spikes is gone. <laughs> I, I was like, I think I did a rockabilly show with you. I don't know if that was the first show we did, but it was the Stray Cat. Is that even rockabilly? Yeah. Stray Cat Strut. When oh, we Mr. Did, T's. Uh, at Big, uh, Mr. Biggs in Fuller. Or at Biggs, yeah, 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 yeah. Was that the first show, or did we do a Monday Night Tees first? I can't even remember anymore. I, don't know. I love that we've known each other <laughs> for now almost what, probably almost eight years. Yeah. You've had to deal with me for a long ass time, girl. And I love it. I love that too. You, and how do you feel about, cause the thing is, even though this has nothing to do with burlesque, I kind of heard this the other day and it made me think about, cause like, how do you feel about Latin representation in burlesque in the sense of, do you think that there is a lot to go? Cause like in Drag Race, I heard there has never been a winner that was Latina mm. ever in 17 oh, wow. seasons. Oh, wow. And I remember finding out that there had never been a male burlesque winner at the hall of fame that was Latin. So do you feel like Latin representation, do you feel like there's a reason why maybe more Latin people aren't getting into burlesque or maybe not sticking with it? Or why do you feel like that's lacking? I feel like it could be a blend of things. There might be some performers that don't, that don't put it out there that they're Latino or Latinx. Sorry, that's what the kids say nowadays. Hey, no, we, we love everybody. <laughs> the Latinx. So I feel like some performers might not uh, acknowledge that or they might not announce it, you know, they might not be as open about it. And some of them, yeah, they might try, they might give it a shot, but then they don't really follow through and pursue it as strongly. But then there's other Latinx performers that have been able to, to keep at it and represent it proudly. So I feel like it's different variables that, uh, that kind of, and also like just the, stigma that we have growing up of, you know, like, conservativeness and being quiet and da-da-da, you know, like, and sex is so on the down low, da 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 all that stuff. So I feel like that probably has a lot to do with it, too. And, you know, even, like, or being something that you can't really share with your family. Thankfully, I can share it with mine, but... I was uh, going to say that's such a privilege and so, <laughs> so wonderful, but had they always been so supportive? No. There was... There were a few years that my mom would ask me, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? Are you Same. done performing? Are you done? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's interesting and because I always... like, mom, I'm getting paid. It's not a lot, but you know, $5 is $5. <laughs> no, don't tell people you make it $5. Ruby, I know, you're I'm making, kidding, I'm kidding. I know you're not, but I, if you were making $5, we are going to have a conversation I know. about that because you are you are an icon in the burlesque scene not only uh, all these accolades but you've also been like part of the 21st century burlesque top t uh, 100 in 2018 yeah. you've literally stepped up your game ever since i've known you you've always been super humble super sweet so easy to work with do hey. you what going back a little bit what do you feel like was the moment that your mom or maybe just your family entirely started kind of accepting it uh i would say maybe like five years ago so it's been like fairly recent that wow. I feel like that they're like accepting of it and understand that that it's my life like it's not just something fun and it might also be because they've seen me go through so many other phases of of trends or fads or things that I was into you know like before I was like totally into salsa dancing and I was going salsa dancing every night and so they'd be like oh that's what she's into now so I think you know for a while they probably just thought oh this you know it's another thing she's into for now but now that i've it's not just something i'm into it's it's a career so how now do you, they what, get do you it. <laughs> what was uh around that time was there something that just kind of made them get it or is it just something that they realized that yeah you you've made a career out of it it has i to think they realized it maybe more when i would shed light on my accomplishments that i've been doing and also 
I think for my mom, it was more when she started seeing that I was traveling because of burlesque. Like, I wasn't just traveling to go have fun. Like, I was going to travel to perform and to do something, you know, and and get paid for it. So I think that's when she was like, okay, okay, you know. This yeah, is, and you, this is a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah, it's true. That's how I felt when they when my family went to L two Can. Even though they were supportive, they were always kind of side eyeing it. Like, is this a real thing for men to do? And then it was like <laughs> once they saw it in like a Cuban cabaret setting, it was mm -hmm. like like it was the perfect santeria to sprinkle on them to be like, oh, I get yeah. it. We like it. Because um, yeah. you also headlined the first international Hispanic. I'm saying that's totally wrong. Burlesque festival. Uh, the Latin Burlesque Festival in Dallas. Yeah. That one. And yeah. That, oh my gosh, only... yes. That was such a fun one. And uh, that's when, like, uh, Frances Francesca, Kit Natividad and I, like, super connected. And then, you know, we've been friends ever since. Yeah, that was a really fun time. I love that. I'm very, uh, I'm very, I love seeing the representation that everyone kind of has in Burlesque. Because it is, like... There's so many levels to it. There's hobbyists, there's intermediate, there's people doing it full time. And to yeah. see that you, you can see who, you know, is at what level in the sense of like after a while where they want to take it, but there's space for everyone, which I kind of love. Because I know that wasn't always, because even when I first started Burlesque, yeah, 2010, I remember just mm -hmm. being like, it's all women and all women performers. Is there a spot for me? And when everyone was just so welcoming and like, like drag yeah. and a bunch of other things, it was very... I was very excited about that. But I was also like, this isn't going to last very long. And <laughs> clearly I'm wrong about shit. Here I'm you are now, yeah. And I'm, and I'm glad because, Mira, I will show my nalgas to the world as long as they keep asking for it. Yep. You know, why not? Same. Why not? Same. Yeah, do you, I, um, I ask myself, like, how long am I going to do this? And I figure, well, I, I guess I'll do it as long as people ask to see my booty. Ruby Champagne, do you know what I say every time someone goes, how long do you think you can even do this? And it's like, you do realize that after a while, we are literally called burlesque legends if we just never stop. <laughs> yes. So I'm finna do this till the wheels pop off because once people are like, I don't want to see your body anymore, I'm gonna be like, cool, I'll just host. Yeah. You know, like switch it up. Uh, yeah, you just host, host, just show up. Or yeah. produce, yeah, and be behind the scenes because I love the idea of it and I love yeah watching people fall in love with it because people it's like drag people fall in love with burlesque in a way where it's like when they see it they can never be told what it is until they see it and yeah. there's so much different kinds of it that it's like maybe you don't like this show but you'll definitely love this show so it's really Absolutely. interesting to see yeah. that and i love that it's built you've been producing though too during this uh, couple of last months young lady I have it's been pretty fun i was actually inspired by my sweetums to go forward to produce a show because I was like thinking, well, because I had done tassels and teas at venues, a couple different venues and whatnot. So then I got to thinking, well, what if I did it online and started doing it on Instagram Live? And it's been fun. And I, and then every month I'm like, should I do it again? And so and my every my month we're like, like, do it, do it, go for it. I'm like, okay, I'll do it again. So. I, so even put, with that, I'm like, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if this will be my last one, and then I'll start thinking, okay, well maybe I'll do another one next month, and and then people seem to really love it. I, I get really amazing feedback from it, and and that's and that's such a really uh, satisfying feeling is is getting the personal feedback, like the personal messages after the shows, and and even like the comments during the shows, and especially you know married couples watching the show and. And that's really, really awesome. And it's it's really neat to be able to provide that during this time. Absolutely. And I love it. I was a part of one of, I think, one of the first productions that you the, did online. The first one, the Cinco de Mayo one. Yeah. Yeah. And I try to put the flyer up right now, but I'll put it after because it got cropped out a little bit. But oh, we had just about awesome. about Thunder in there, Ray Gunn. We got a yes. bunch of people. Uh, Madison yeah. Jane. Jordan, it's going to be. And the show is going to be next Thursday, August Thursday. 6th, correct? 6th. Yes, 7.30 p.m. on Instagram Live. Cause right I'm here. Because I'm happy enough to do the Zoom thing, so. <laughs> Listen, I'm Six still on here right now because I'm like, I could, I could do it. It's just I don't think there's going to be many people watching it. But. Yeah, I'm not ready to go on the Zoom thing. <laughs> it's a lot. You need a team. But let me tell you that if you ever need someone to help you with some Zoom stuff and need someone that doesn't need to be in the show just helping you out, let me know. I'll hook you up. Like, I'll definitely. Okay. 
I, it'd be nice to just like help out and not have to have the pressure of like actually performing. So Sorry, if you need, yeah. if you need to elevate your game, you know, I'm always down to like help the cause. Thank I love you. you. Um, before we go uh, play some ga a game, do you want to talk a little bit about your Adam and Eve campaign ads? Oh yeah, and I thought of some other stuff I can talk about. So I'm really excited that I, I did a campaign ad thingy for Adam and Eve. Uh, so I did like five posts and apparently they did really well. So they contacted me to do another run of campaign ads. So I got to select some other items, but now not only lingerie, but I selected some toys, not transformers. And uh, <laughs> I know what toys you meant. I know what toys you meant. <laughs> and some uh, lubes and lotions. So we'll see what they, cause I gave them like a list of things. So I don't know what they're actually gonna end up sending me. But I thought that was pretty awesome that they invited me to, to or hired me to, uh, to do it again. And I wanted to bring up the burlesque deck, the, the deck of cards, playing cards. I'm featured on in those. I can't tell you what suit I suit. Is that what it is? I think yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I think it's I think I'm ten of diamonds and ten of spades or I don't know. Something like that. But they're super cute. I have them but they're way over there, so I'm not gonna get them. Right <laughs> <laughs> but they came out really fun, so you should check them out at Burlesque Deck. And oh yeah, I will be uh, giving out a handful, like per, like sending them to my Patreon members, my highest tier Patreon members. So I do have a Patreon, y'all. If you want to see some more movies, like a lot more. Is it and, at Ruby Champagne? Yeah, Ruby Champagne. Perfect. Let me get all the links, and then I'll make sure to post it on here and then on YouTube when I upload this there. Um, and but then, you're pretty. Uh, you're pretty easy. You have Ruby Champagne everywhere. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Yeah. Fortunately, I'm able to, to get Ruby Champagne, so it's easy to find. Uh, I'm also doing a Lola Boutte Presents' uh, brunch show. <laughs> brunch battle? Hell yeah. Yeah. On the ninth? Yeah. I forgot what day. It's like this, the ninth or something. Yeah, it's, it's the, ninth. the ninth. It's Sunday the ninth. Yeah, dope, yeah. girl. You are so busy. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And then viewer. I'm going to do some Tiki Oasis things in a couple weeks as well. So. Ooh, because they didn't have it this year, right? No, there's not a Tiki Oasis event, but they're going to have some like interactive things with uh, online things. So I'm part of uh, Vestige, Vestige Photography. I think that's her photography thing. Uh, I'm part of her little show, Delio. I'm going to be like hosting a go-go dance party. Ooh, okay. And, yeah, so some, some fun stuff. I'm into, listen, I'm into all of that, girl. You are a busy little jumping bean. I'm fucking into this shit. Uh, my love, my light. <laughs> As are my you, which I love watching. You know, <laughs> and I love, first of all, you've been a part of so many shows I've done and, and online and in person. And it's like, I love working with you. You're literally the shit. Likewise. And even if I'm having a bad day, like you always, your smile, it's real hard to have a bad day and be around your smile. Like it just Aww. fucking is. <laughs> uh, my love, do you want to play a game? Let's play. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the comments for this so people can join. I'm probably gonna join. totally suck, but that's great. No, you're not. It's called Name That Stripper. <laughs> it's a G's Louise production. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. It's my favorite game, and remember <laughs> that the it's comments. It's been fun watching everybody play. Listen, I, the idea is not to make you guess it wrong. The idea is just to promote friends. You know? Yeah. So yeah. today we're gonna see how well you do. Um, <laughs> Basically, what's going to happen, if you've never played it before, I know you ha have seen it, but uh, for everyone new tuning in, I'm going to show a burlesque icon or performer, and they're going to be pixelated, and then you have to tell me who that stripper is. Now, if you don't know who it is, you can ask people in the comments, and if they know, they can help you, and it's all in good fun. You don't win shit. Um, <laughs> so here we go, y'all. I win Here's your... smiles and hearts. You win bragging rights. <laughs> that you won on the Cito Bonito show before it was on uh, NBC. Uh, your first stripper, name that stripper. Damn, she got what? blocked off. I love her so much. Who do you think this, who do you think this queen is? It's the, it's the other part of the, the um, band. When the band's back together, Jezebel Thunder. The band is back together, Jezebel <laughs> Thunder. Yes, her Yay. face got a little cut off there, but. I, don't, I would be. I would argue if anyone didn't think that this picture was just about thunder. Right. All right. Okay. One for one. That's cute. Let's try to stump her. Let's try to stump her. Uh, yes. All right. Ruby Champagne. Name that stripper. Oh. So. Ah, 
fabulous. I love like I like when they go on their Instagram and they go like do do. It's like how do they do that? I fucking love it. Eva Zickfield. Yes, Eva. <laughs> love Eva so much. Look at this icon. One of those drag queen performers who is beautiful as a woman and fine as fuck as a dude, and I'm hella jealous about it. Uh, and shout out the costuming is ridiculous. Oh my god, I want Ava to do. Uh, I want to do a tribute of the Riddler from Batman Forever, and I want Ava to do it because I like that green suit and then have that crazy suit underneath. I'm stupid. Y'all don't want me to have a budget. All right. Here we go. We're going to do a burlesque legend right now. And if you don't get this, I'm taking away your burly cue card. Here we go, y'all. Name that stripper. Ah, I know that picture, but I can't place the name. Jenny Lee. Jenny, Jenny Lee. Lee. I was like, I was like, Lee? Something. You got, I know you got it. <laughs> but this picture is so iconic. Everyone knows it. it. This is, is mood. This is a fucking mood y'all i love this it queen is. that's the best so like, damn much like the best image <laughs> it's so, i think i think we should all just start recreating it i'm gonna do it with my butt. i did actually but i never posted it but i i took one i took one like that backstage at bootleg bombshell show you should definitely post. Thingy, and i was like <laughs> you should definitely post that because if you post it yeah. i'll post one of my, me doing that with my butt <gasps> yes it'll be cute as fuck okay all it. right we got two more Ruby Champagne, name that stripper. Is that my fellow Mexicana, Bella Sin? There you go, yes! yes! Bella Sin, look at <laughs> fine. And she motherfucking wants to look, this is cropped correctly. Oh, this hell is a, yeah. This is a good ass fucking photo. Okay, one more, Gorgeous. and then we have to bid for well. Oh yeah, she I'm, has an amazing lash line. She really does, she really fucking yeah. does. All right, this they're is your last one. They're light and fluffy, they're beautiful. Shout out uh, Cedric of Hollywood. Um, Cedric all right, yo, Ruby, this is your last one. <gasps> Name that stripper. I for this. I know, I was trying to stump you. I can give you a hint and you can ask for help in the audience. Remember, it's not like a big deal. Help me. Does anybody in the audience know who this stripper is and can help? I can give you a hint of where they're located. Buddy. I believe it's, I'll just say Bay Area, Bay Area cause it's like, San Francisco Deweese. or Oakland. No, it's not Coco Indigo Blue. De Deweese? Oh, yes. Sergeant DeWise. Oh, Deweese. Yes. Yes. Ah! Good job. You got I them all. Her. Congratulations. <laughs> you know how to name that fucking stripper, girl. Oh. Hey. Ruby, Champagne, I love you so much. Thank you for joining us. Please come back. You. Any, anytime you want to promote anything you want, you know you always have a space in my small ass apartment in downtown Los Angeles. Your tiny ass apartment. <laughs> Let me know whenever you want to cuddle, cuddle it up. Even though you got a man, let me know. I can spit right in the middle, like, uh, what's his name? Um, Agador Spartacus in the birdcage. Let's do it. Yay. I love you. And yeah, and I, I would love to invite you back to do another Tassels and Teas. Whenever you want. You know my body belongs to you, honey. Likewise. Mwah. I love Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us, and we will definitely have you back, girl. I love you. Say bye to Ruby Champagne, bye. everybody. Ciao. Oh, so amazing. I'm going to put the flyer to her show right here. It's still a little large, but it's August 6th, 730 Pacific time via Instagram live at Ruby Champagne. Y'all definitely want to check her out. Look at this star studded ass cast. Y'all don't want to miss out on this shit. Plus you get to see her perform as well. So uh, <laughs> Miss Indigo Blue is saying, first of all, you're not old. You're just seasoned. Second of all, I don't know. You might be blind. Uh, you're not scared for your game. You'll be amazing. I am so excited. I will shout out, uh, we are sponsored by Ever After Creations with an extra S on Instagram. So make sure if you want to get some custom masks, t-shirts, sweaters, whatever the fuck you want to do, go follow them on Instagram, Ever After Creations. And if you want to stop fucking wasting money on toilet paper, then go check out Aim to Wash on Instagram as well. They have amazing bidets and they gave me one that shit makes my booty feel so good. And why use toilet paper when you could just splash some... Get in the splash zone. Get in the splash zone, y'all. Aim to wash. I need fucking help. All right, y'all. I'm very excited to bring on our second guest uh, for the evening. This is a burlesque icon. And when I tell you this was one of the first icons I met throughout my career, um, we had a very magical moment at the Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, Asheville, how do I never say this right? Asheville Burlesque and Sideshow Festival. 
um, when I was going through my first years of burlesque and acting wild and crazy. So I'm very, very excited to bring this person on and talk a little bit about just all of the things that they've accomplished in the burlesque scene, as well as uh, what we might be seeing from them in the future. So please, without any further ado, please help me welcome to your screens, the icon, the everything you need in your life, Miss Indigo Blue. Hi. 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 Look, I have some options for you so we can just talk this oh. out of the way. I can either post uh, this one that has both of those Venmos or I can just post the one so people can see that clear. Um, I think that's better. Um, if you, if anybody wanted to Venmo me, it's easy. It's Miss Indigo Blue, but I'd rather give lots of props to Until Freedom so they can use the money right now. And uh, they're doing a lot to raise visibility about Brianna Taylor. So I I'd love to that. do that. That's very important. And I please, y'all, please make sure you are donating because not a lot of people do that shit. But when they see it in the future, make sure you donate on Venmo to Until Freedom. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing cause. Thank you so much for offering that. Uh, how are you doing, Lila? Oh, man, it's been a really special five months, hasn't it? <laughs> First of all, that's the best <laughs> adjective I've heard of it. That is so nice. Special. It's a special. So, so special. special. So special. I, I do feel like it's weird to ask everyone, how are you doing during the pandemic? But I do also feel like it's important for people to see how entertainers are kind of dealing with situations like this. Because I don't think people realize that entertainers deal with situations like these all the time. Mm -hmm. And we all yeah, that's, that's definitely true. It is. It's a whole brand new world. And, you know, our whole industry is completely changed, like, overnight. So it, it's, it's an interesting time. But you've been around, uh, do you, I, you know, I want to talk about all of the amazing things that you've done, uh, because you started out in burlesque under the burlesque legends Wild Cherry and Kitty West uh, in 2001. Um, <laughs> I mean, I studied, I studied, actually, it's so funny because Angie Pontani asked me this question too, Uman, when I spoke on her podcast just recently, and I spent a lot more time with Wild Cherry. I was a mentee of hers, and we were very close. So I definitely hold Wild Cherry as like one of my, um, my trainers. I did take class from Kitty West, but Wild Cherry was really like a trainer, a teacher of mine. That's actually how I always feel about uh, Jeez Louise and Jezebel Thunder, even though they're not burlesque legends right now. I feel like Jeezy is my cherry, and then Jezebel is totally my kitty for sure. Because it's like, mm -hmm. I'm always learning from both of them. But Jeezy's the one that if I ever have a problem, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And she just lays it flat for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you, you've seen a dramatic shift in burlesque uh, in the last, you know, <clears throat> years. Total years. Yes, that's right. And actually, it's funny, you were saying earlier in the show, like, that you weren't even sure how long this whole thing was going to last. You know, it was when you first started, you were like, Oh, I'll do this for a while. We'll see how it goes. And here you are like 10 years later, I felt the same way when I I mean, and then let's just say it like 20 years ago, right? Yeah. When I started, when I started performing, um, along with the other neo burlesquers in the burgeoning scene, um, I had already been doing burlesque for another oh, 10 -ish years before that, but I didn't really know what it was. So it, I just didn't really think it was going to last that long. I had no idea that this was going to become like not just a scene or a movement, but a community and an industry. So it's, yeah. It's a lot. I'm very, because my thing is too, I feel like as a man, it just felt extra like, I don't, and I also was uh, an artist that kind of went to like a lot of, acting gigs and never got any so when I got into burlesque I just joined I just auditioned for Jeezy's troupe because we had already been friends and I had that kind of like confidence from her to be like bitch just try it but I remember being like there's no way I'm so bad <laughs> there's just no way that it's gonna I didn't even <laughs> think of it as the industry or the community or the art form wouldn't last I just felt like it was so unmarked territory that I didn't even know how to like really navigated and I do feel like the one thing that always kind of navigated me in the right direction was just making sure I listened to Jeezy and then all the other performers who were performing and making sure that if I didn't like my number but the producer did don't bitch to the producer that you didn't like your number like just figure it out and just quietly keep 
faking it till you make it as you know. Absolutely. And I think, you know, just what you what you actually raised is that this is a scene that we have self created, right? Yeah. We create our own acts, we build, we do everything ourselves, really. I mean, there are definitely folks who perform in troops or with production companies, but more then more often than not, performers are independent artists who are doing their own production, their own booking, their own creation, their own choreography, all of that stuff, right? So the, the individualness of it also means that we create all the definitions. Like we made up this idea of what is a legend, like you were saying earlier. We made True. up, you know, like what are performance standards? We made up what is a show, what isn't a show? So we literally invented all of this stuff ourselves, which is awesome, let me just say, because it means that we can reinvent and recreate and redefine what is happening as the entire scene and industry and community is shifting. Like it is all within our power to do that. Oh my God, like if I could amplify that, I'm just gonna take that sound bite and put that when my <laughs> phone rings. Because it's, so, <laughs> because it's so, it, it is so true. And even though like drag is that part two, it is because mm -hmm. you've seen the shift from, in a sense, traditional burlesque into what they call neo-burlesque, which is using more modern songs and just playing a little bit more to a modern audience. Do you feel, or not feel, but was there a, when neo-burlesque started kicking in, was there a uh, kind of, not a clapback, but a kind of, like how did the classic performers treat that? I know there wasn't as many as there are now, but was that even something that people were willing to accept or were they just kind of like looking down on it? Well, listen, here's something that I have seen repeatedly when I've studied the history of burlesque is that you'll be in, you know, a bunch of performers will be performing and they'll look back and look at what happened 10 years before and be like, that wasn't burlesque. Mm. Like that happens repeatedly over and over and over again in the history of burlesque because it's also an evolving art form. Mm. It is not static. And what we call classic is sort of a, is one style. What we call classic is like, primarily glamour oriented, less narrative, uh, more, you know, beauty and, and celebration of the physical form. That is mostly what classic is, right? But what that even means has changed and will continue to change, right? So I, I don't know, I mean, yeah, I think, I remember when Gorlesque started and yes. people were like, people were like pouring blood on themselves and doing stuff to like death metal. And it was like this whole like subgenre of burlesque was gorelesque. And people were like into it. Like they were feeling what yeah. that meant. Right. And I heard what you were saying earlier about, um, you know, you and Ruby were talking about sort of themed burlesque and how doing things that are very specific to like fan, fan oriented burlesque or nerd burlesque, those kinds yeah. of ideas. Like, these are things that, uh, you know, come up and we play with and we'll continue to do. And some folks are like, well, that's not burlesque, well, whatever. I mean. Yeah, but that's also like how many, like, I know, I, I know last week I talked to Joe Boobs about this and just the idea of burlesque being mainstream. But I do love that idea of it kind of not being because I don't want the drag race 13 year olds telling me what burlesque is when you can't even get into a club and see it for yourself. So mm -hmm. it is, I love the idea of, not being able to define it and, be, and it being broad enough where it is art, art, art is subjective. Like if a painting can look like a million different things, why can't every art form look like that too? I, I totally agree with you. And I think that, well, first of all, it's a very interesting note that in this industry where burlesque is online now, maybe that 13 year old can actually see it live, just like any other person may have access to it, right? So the way that we've conceptualized burlesque in terms of access, like it's an adult entertainment form that also like, inter it's the internet, right? Yeah. It's wild, wild west out there. Like who knows what happens on the interwebs? Like we're gonna, maybe there'll be a burlesque oh, yeah. performer that's gonna show up in a, like a Minecraft thing. I don't know. Um, yeah, um, I, I digress. Go ahead, my love. No, 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 it's true. And it's like, because I know even like my little cousins were very, very young when I started burlesque. They were like eight and five. And they had seen it because it's like if they watched it on YouTube or anything like that, they'd be like, Oh, my God, I can do your routine. And I'm like, No, <laughs> like, no. But it's but YouTube so is, 
YouTube has absolutely been, because I remember when I was first learning about male burlesque and just studying YouTube, when I look at male burlesque now, it's like, there's just so much more content to consume than there was 10 years ago. I so appreciate that you just said that because when I was first studying burlesque, I was going to um, video rental places and trying to find like VHS tapes and like ordering VHS tapes from the something weird catalog. Um, <laughs> So I really appreciate that, like, I think these are important things to be attentive to, right? So, so much of what wasn't available when a bunch of uh, sort of like old schoolers were coming up is available now, plus a gazillion more pieces of content, right? So it gives performers even more liberty, even more inspiration to draw from. And it also gives them a lot of impetus to be even more creative and even more innovative and to really define their own identity. I think that's, you know, one of the biggest challenges that all artists face, but burlesque artists in particular, because we're in such a tiny microcosm, you know? Right. How do you feel? Do you feel that it's uh, easy to identify how you want to present yourself? Or is that just something that everybody's going to have a different answer to that? Like, is it easier to set yourself apart? Like, how are ways that people can even do that? Like, it, so, I mean, th this is such a good question because it actually ties into, you know, what all burlesque performers should be thinking about, which is representing themselves rather than just picking something iconic that they think is interesting and replicating it or appropriating it. So I think, right. you know, when, when we look at our own identities and our own histories and our own personhood, and we bring that into our performance and into our artistry, then then we're sort of automatically on that road to uniqueness. Now, sometimes this can create some conflict with creating a persona or an identity or a character that's very distinct from us. And people definitely do make that choice, right? Right. But I still think that, you know, that's so funny, like I do a lot of business stuff and I was in a business call today where people were talking about, well, the way to be individual in business is to realize no puzzle piece is like any other. You are the unique puzzle piece, right? And I sort of feel that way about us. Like we are our own unique puzzle piece. We don't, we do ourselves a disservice by trying to be imitative. So by really looking to ourselves to see what drives us, who we are, what our personal motivation is for doing this piece or choosing this music or building this costume, like that's how we move more towards, you know, the uniqueness and the individuality that I think burlesque performers have been scratching and crawling for since time eternal. You know, when, yes. when I first went to go visit um, the old goat farm, the old exotic world out in uh, Hellendale oh, yeah. in the mm -hmm. desert, right out there on Route 66. I say when it I, like I ever went, but I, you know. <laughs> when I first went there and I went into that super like hot double wide trailer that was just like teeming with flies and like smelled like old feathers, if you know what I mean? I think you do. And there was just like, eight by 10 after eight by 10 after eight by 10 after eight by 10 on the wall of all these performers that you have literally never heard of before. Like so many of them and each of them were trying so hard to make a name for themselves and to be something and to be someone, right? Yeah. So this is, that is one of the things about this form and about our lineage, about our, our, our heritage and our ancestry and burlesque is that individuality is a key comp imitation also but sure. individuality is a key component of how people set themselves apart so absolutely if anyone's wondering why indigo blue sounds so articulate it's because you're also the headmistress of the academy of burlesque uh that came out of a passion from you loving burlesque loving to teach how has that evolved in the last 20 years do you feel like um do you feel like I don't know, I have a lot of opinions about different schools and like your school and I know a lot of people that have come through it has, has been one of the most like amazing ways to teach burlesque because there's a lot of schools where it's basically just like churning out like a factory of performers and you can kind of mm. see it in their acts. So what do you feel like sets apart, sets yours apart and has set it apart for it to be around for so long? Well, first of all, thank you. I think that's really, it's really lovely to hear that reflected back. And I really appreciate that, that awareness. Um, yeah, so the Academy has been uh, operating since 2003. 
Um, as you probably know, in March, we switched to all online classes. So we have an amazing, by the way, uh, set of classes coming up this August that people can access at academyofburlesque.com, including a fan series, a fan dance series with Amara Strutt, which is very, very, very cool. Um, yeah. I'm teaching how to strip for your lover on Sunday. I saw that and listen, I'm like, on Sunday, I'm off. I'm definitely taking that class. I, I don't mean, have a lover, but I'm gonna do it for my damn self. Can I do it for well, myself if I don't have a lover? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a par usually it's a partnered class. So how we're going to do it is going to be like, well, the cool thing about Zoom is that you can actually put people into little um, meeting rooms. You can put people into small rooms. So we host our classes on Zoom. So I can set up little pairs of people to do stripping for themselves privately. It's going to be so cute. I love that. Uh, oh, please, I love it. So uh, I'm going to make sure to link everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to make sure to link everything uh, in the caption on YouTube and here. Uh, okay, cool. That is so fucking exciting. It's going to be really fun. Um, well, let how... me, do I have time to answer your question about the Academy in general? You, absolutely. Okay. All right. So something that we have emphasized in our Burlesque 101 series, which is our six week, now it's turned into an eight week online program, but it's a six week signature program that takes people from even knowing nothing about burlesque. Some folks who've never had dance or movement or theater history have come to the Academy of Burlesque. And at the end of that time, they have a completed individual burlesque act that they can perform on stage in front of their friends and family. And obviously, because of the regulations in Washington State and everywhere, we're doing this all completely online at this time. But what we have always emphasized is that, is the idea of building a narrative. That's been a really important cornerstone of our teachings is to build a narrative, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And it's very character driven. So the first thing that performers do after they've had a history lesson, which is essential, Enjoy. is is to build their character. And they go away and do that on their own. They don't do that in class. They go away individually. They can consult with their friends or their associates or their ideas, but they build a character that's individual. And that is really the root of how their act is created. So Instead of teaching group choreography, which we do in some of our group classes, we really encourage each performer to come up with their own story, costuming, narrative, uh, character behaviors, uh, style, right? And we really encourage each individual person. We try to tease out the skills that each individual has. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a strong value of mine to ensure that each person really gets to create their own thing right love that yeah it's so true because it's especially that was one of the biggest things that i learned that oddly worked like i just didn't even as a per person that was learning to perform because i'm a theater college dropout so i and i always had that issue <laughs> of just understanding how to be a character as an actor but as a burlesque performer i realized i could just not emphasize myself, but in a way, yeah, just kind of exaggerate it. And yeah. I remember when I started hosting, Lily Von Stipp told me this, because I just started doing kind of the whole thing that everyone did, which was the same kind of dirty jokes. And I remember she goes, uh, that's been done, be yourself. And I remember being like, skirt, that doesn't make any sense. And I remember the next time I did a show and I was just myself, it was like, it just went boom, 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 and it clicked and everyone said it. And of course there was fine tuning to do after that. But I remember just being like, if I had known that I could have just been yeah. a version of myself this whole time, I would have started this at 17. Like, if I had known that this was even around back then in the way that where it would have Listen, been. I feel you. I feel you so much. And I think that, you know, so much of what we struggle with as performers, like imposter syndrome, and like, trying to achieve these goals that we see that are like, what are they anyway, as yeah. opposed to just fully expressing ourselves. I mean, I think there's a lot psychologically that is behind that as performers. I mean, we clearly are all attention whores. We clearly have some sort of deep hole that needs to be filled by something that is, you know, applause oriented as well as other things. We don't need to go down that road. But Fill that I think, hole. Right? I think it's a thing. And, you know, that's actually partly why I started veering towards doing visioning classes as well. And that's something I'm doing kind of tangential to what I'm doing with the Academy of Burlesque. I do that as Amelia Casals, which is my given name, my real live muggle name. But I actually help support people in figuring out what their vision is, what their dreams are, what 
so they can really craft goals that make sense to them, right? So they can yeah. really reconnect and remember who they actually are, what they love, who they're connected to, what they want. It's like, sometimes we're just, as performers especially, we're just like aiming for the next show, we're freaked out about money, we're trying to get the next rhinestones on that shoe. And so it's really difficult for us to like think forward or yeah. like imagine the long game. Yeah, and it's weird so, too, because it's like, it's hard to imagine the long game when the long game hasn't really been something, like I know I can't really look at a male burlesque performer and be like, I want to live my life like that. Like there's not really, you have to create your own shit and that's scary, but it's also right. necessary. And if it's necessary, what was it? And I hate, I hate saying this like in the sense of like, referencing something outside of what we're talking about but it's like uh will smith put a TikTok on yesterday where he was like if you're scared to do something do it scared or something that's right and, that's bravery that's and, literally bravery like absolutely. bravery isn't the absence of fear it's feeling the fear and doing it anyway and also like just as a side note we all need to be building that muscle of yep. doing things that we're terrified of. It's about resilience. It's like, we need it right now. We need it politically. We need it socially. And we as artists need to keep doing things that are pushing our edges and that we're terrified of so that we can model that for folks. So we can give people examples of like what to do in their muggle lives when they're freaking out. They'll be like, well, but this one time I saw Tito Bonito do, put his butt tassels on his shelf. And so I feel like maybe I could, you know, vote. You know, I could, I could at least vote. Right? Yeah, it's true. It's a, listen, I, <laughs> I am so like enthralled right now. And I'm so bummed because we're about to run out of time in like a little bit. And so we have to play a game, but like you are speed round. so, let's say that again. We'll do a speed round. Well, no, we're, we can take our time. We have a little bit of time, <laughs> okay. but okay. I'm getting better at knowing the time. But I just love speaking to you. You are so in like brilliant and I, don't want to move to Seattle, but y'all are making it real hard not to want to because it's honestly like I love you all. And you know, especially from when we first met in Asheville to all of the times that I've mm -hmm. talked about that story and everything after, mm -hmm. like, you know, you absolutely have a piece of my heart. And that's not a Thank joke. You. That's not talking shit. I love you so much. And anytime you want to jump on this, anytime you want to promote something, let me <laughs> know. And anything I can do, I'm down to help. So you know I, I really... Love. Thank you, sweetie. I really appreciate appreciate the way you just like straight up said this is to promote my friends. Like you're not even trying. You're not even trying for like fairness or anything. You're just like I like my friends, and this is what this is what's happening. Like but, I am so into that straightforwardness right now. But that's the I'm thing. You're it. also. It's not like all my friends that I'm having on this show aren't doing things and aren't it's true <laughs> strong and like and inspirational. So it's one right. of those things where it's like, yeah, I want to promote you guys. It's not like a lot of people tip. Mm, tip. <laughs> so if, if that's if that's the case, then the idea is to, even if there's not a lot of people watching, eventually there will be if I just don't stop. So we'll, they'll come back to these episodes and see all this shit and we'll be on NBC or something like that because we don't need that's another right. late night talk show named Jimmy. Like we just don't, you know? We don't. Uh, well, let me, let me give one tiny plug. Listen, y'all, the reason why you need to um, give money to Until Freedom is, so I don't know if you've heard Tamika Mallory speak, but she's absolutely extraordinary, a major movement maker. Um, and this organization has been on the front lines of organizing in local communities to get folks to speak the name of Breonna Taylor and to push for the arrest of her murderers. And I mean, I think, I even think that what we saw with um, Oprah's cover and with, you know, a, a, an investigation being opened is directly the result of the work that Until Freedom and others are doing. So these, this organization is amazing. It's intersectional. It's been around for a long time and they are really, really dedicated and focused to this movement. So um, I, I strongly encourage you to, to follow them and check them out and get their posts and give them some money. Hell yeah, I love that so much. All right, we got five minutes, so we have enough time to okay. play a very special edition of Name That Stripper. I didn't want to do right. the same game, but I knew there was a fun way to switch it up because I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to fuck you up with a weird game. So we're going to, what's going to happen is this is still Name That Stripper. However, I am going to show you baby photos of these burlesquers and you are, this is hard as fuck. I'm not going to lie. Listen, you know, I just, um, I just became an auntie, somebody... right? I just became an auntie to twins. So like I have these twin nibblings, and so I'm 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 amazing at baby faces. I'm good at this. Ooh, all right, let's see it. I'm putting on the comments so in case you need help, right. uh, anyone can help you. <laughs> I will help me, um, people. 
You better phone a friend. All right, so we're gonna start <laughs> off with something Who's super easy. Okay. We're gonna start off with something super easy. Who okay. is this little nugget? Name that stripper. Boy, that's you. Come on now. That is so yeah. cute. Look, you're gonna make that same face. Look at that little roll. Look at that I literally cute have jelly that. roll. Look how cute that's you are. Look at that gold chain. Did I think I was in a gang? Breathe. I mean, look at that smile. You are cheesing. How old are you? Like two? I was probably like two, yeah. And look how yeah. I'm literally still wearing pretty much that exact same stuff every day. <laughs> it's basically exactly the same outfit. You're so adorable. Look at that hat! Ooh, Moscato <laughs> Exactic is in the house. Oh, what? This is perfect then. Uh, name that stripper. Who's this baby? So I happen to know who this creature is because this human is from Seattle and was a graduate of the Academy of Burlesque. This is the luminous pariah. And I believe that that was actually in Alaska. Oh my when God. That I was love, taken. I sh you know what I should have done? I should have had uh, grown up pictures of them, but I did this kind of fast today. Uh, <laughs> that is well, I mean, right. It's just, <laughs> that compared to what the luminous pariah looks like now, like, no. Total, With, total like the shift. eyelashes down here and shit. Total, total shift. Happens. I love it. All right, name <laughs> that stripper. Look at this nugget. I. <laughs> Who do y'all think this is? I mean, okay, is that Kitten Larue? Like, yes, what the that is it Kitten is? Larue. No shit. <laughs> I mean, look at that face. The eye, it's the eyebrows. It's a, and it's a stank face. I mean, it's... Kitten Larue has like a serious like on stage stank that is amazing. It's very, very true. We love Kitten LaRue so it, damn much here. Also that bunny. Let's have a Do moment. You know, let's look have at some, the little some I, just, I have, the funny thing is I use contact photos <laughs> on Instagram or on my phone. I use baby pictures for everyone. So this is my favorite thing. Name this stripper. Oh, it's kind of blocked off. A little black baby. Uh, uh, kind of hard. Well, uh, I'm gonna say Jezebel Thunder because I know she's she's like your bestie. So I know you have her picture on lock. You know I do. That is absolutely Jezebel That's what Thunder. I'm just, I'm, I mean, I can't see that face at all, but I'm just gonna guess. That is absolutely. On account of like the bestie factor. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely, holy shit, that is so good. Okay, one more because we only have a minute and 20 okay. seconds. Who is this little nugget that I can throw a hint at you if you want? Okay. Yeah, it's so hard. I should have cropped it better. Okay, give me. The, I'll t I will totally take a hint. Uh, she is the Mexican Spitfire of burlesque. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was already up here. Look You're gonna put her up again? Yes. Uh, Wait, did I put her again? No. Yeah. No. no this that's is Ruby Champagne. That's she absolutely Ruby I mean, Champagne. You. You can. Yeah. You can see it, like, it's kind of funny. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, but once she said, like, yeah, I can see oh, her little yeah. nose, her little, her little have, button nose. We have nose. seconds left, so I'm okay. going to bid you farewell. I love you so much, Indigo. Thank you so much for being on this show. And anytime you want to come back, please come back. I'll post Thank all you, your honey. links. So uh, have a it great night. It was a night. pleasure. The girls and I bid you good night. Ooh, y'all better make good choices. I worry about you. <laughs> Bye, my love. All right, sweetheart. Take care. You too. Oh, Indigo Blue. All right, y'all. I got about 20 seconds left, so please check me out. I'm on Bitch Puddin's Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash bitch puddin. And check us out every Friday. Next week, we have some special guests. But for now, TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Bye!